Welcome to the National Gun Trust's ATF eForm1 Video Walkthrough Guide. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going over the ATF eForm1 for an individual applicant. Our ATF eForm1 Video Walkthrough Guide will go over page by page for an individual applicant. In order to start the ATF eForm1 application, you'll need to have registered your account on the ATF's eForm website, or for existing users, updated your account for the new ATF eForms website. If you haven't done so yet, please do so before continuing with this video. There is a link to our ATF eForms website new user registration video walkthrough guide and existing user update video walkthrough guide in the video description below. Step 1. Logging in. You will need to navigate to the ATF's eForm website by going to the URL https colon slash slash eforms.atf.gov or, depending on your browser, you can navigate to simply eforms.atf.gov. The page is divided in half. The login area is located on the right side of the screen. You will click the blue login button and click the accept and login to accept the DOJ's warning banner. You will enter your user ID that was emailed to you by the ATF when you registered for your account and the password that you used at the time of the account registration. If you see the app auth and slash symbol before your username, that is correct. You won't need to delete that. Then you will click the blue sign in button. You may see a spinning icon at this time while the eForms website loads, and this is normal. Step 2 Starting your eForm 1 application. In the middle of the screen, you will see the available forms that you can use using the ATF's eForm website. Double click the first green icon, ATF Form 1, and your form will start to load. Once loaded, you'll be able to check the appropriate applicant type and start the application. In this case, for an individual applicant, you will select the individual radio button and click Next. Screen 1, Form 5320.1 page. This screen will display the intended use form and the special instructions. Filing as individual instructions state, the applicant must attach a digital photo in the photo function on the responsible person train stop. The applicant must also provide his or her fingerprints on Form FD-258 or submit an EFT file of their electronic fingerprints. Upon submission of the application, the eForm system will email a cover sheet to the applicant. The cover sheet is to be printed as it will provide the control number of the transaction and the address where to send the paper fingerprint cards. If the applicant uploaded electronic fingerprints in eForms using an EFT file, then the cover sheet will indicate if the electronic fingerprints have been accepted. If the cover sheet indicates the electronic fingerprints have been accepted, then no additional paper fingerprint cards are required to be mailed. If the cover sheet does not indicate the electronic fingerprints have been accepted, then the applicant must mail paper fingerprint cards and the cover sheet to the NFA division within 10 business days of filing the application. We will then again click Next to advance to the next screen. Screen 2, Application Page. This screen is where you will indicate that you are paying the $200 tax to make an NFA firearm. You can leave the internal control number box empty if you don't have an internal control number and click Next. Screen 3, Applicant Page. The Applicant Page is where you will indicate your information as an individual applicant and the maker's questions that are normally located on page 2 of the paper ATF Form 1 application. If you don't have an FFL, you can leave the FFL section blank. If you do have an FFL, you can unclick the No FFL box and either select your FFL from the drop-down based off of your account profile, or click the My FFL is not listed and enter in your FFL information. Your first name, middle name, last name, cadence, country, address line 1 and line 2, zip code, plus 4 for the zip code, city, county, state, telephone, and email address should all be automatically completed based off of your profile information. If the information is incorrect, you will need to update your profile information by clicking My Profile tab located in the top menu bar. The title of the submitter of the application for an individual applicant will simply be Owner or Maker, etc. After that box is completed, you can scroll down to answer the maker's questions. You will answer each question by selecting the answer from the drop-down menu located next to each question. The options are either Yes, No, or Not Applicable. As you proceed through the questions, the red box around each question will disappear. 
If you don't complete a question, the red box around the question will still be present and need to be completed. We will then again click Next to advance to the next screen. On the Responsible Persons page, you will enter your information as an individual. To do so, you will locate the Actions tab of the table. The Actions tab is the last column in the table. You will see the paper and pencil icon. Click that to enter in your information. There are 26 different boxes that you will need to go through. The boxes are self-explanatory, so we will only briefly describe them and common mistakes for the boxes where applicable. Box 1, Citizenship. This is your current citizenship. Box 2, Citizenship Country. This is your citizenship country if you aren't a U.S. citizen. Box 3, Cadence. This is your cadence if you have one. For example, junior, senior, second, third. Boxes 1, 2, and 3 are automatically added from your profile information. Box 4, Title. This is your title. Common examples for an individual include owner, maker, etc. Boxes 5 through 9 should already be completed based on your account information. Box 10, Form 5320.23, will be grayed out and unavailable for individual applicants. This is normal because individual applicants do not submit an ATF 5320.23. This is only used for corporations, trusts, or other legal entities. Box 11 will be where you will upload your digital passport style photo. You can select Choose File to navigate to your digital passport photo. This file can be a JPG or a GIF file, but must be under 3 megabytes in size. While your passport photo is uploading, you may see a spinning blue circle that indicates your photo is being uploaded. Box 12, Electronic Fingerprints. You can upload your .eft file here if you have an electronic fingerprint card file. If you need help obtaining a .eft file, you can click the link in the description. If you don't have a .eft file, then this box will be left blank. Box 13, Social Security Number. This is your social security number and isn't required. However, entering your social security number will aid your background check and is recommended by the ATF for that reason. The ATF further indicates that, not required, failure to provide may delay processing. You won't need to include the dashes, they'll be populated automatically as you enter in your social security number. Box 14, Zip Code. Box 16, City and Box 17, Full Street Address, is automatically completed based off of your profile information. Box 18, Date of Birth. This is your date of birth. The date slashes will be populated automatically as you enter in your date of birth. Box 19, Birth Country. This is your country of birth. Box 20, Birth State, is automatically completed from your profile information. Box 21, State of Residence. This is your current state of residence. Box 22, Sex. This is your sex. Box 23, Ethnicity. This is your ethnicity. Box 24, Race. This is your race. Box 25, AR number or I-9 number. This is your AR number or I-9 number if applicable, but will be completed based off of your profile information. Box 29, UPIN. This is your UPIN. If you don't have a UPIN, you can leave this box blank. Once completed, you can verify your information was entered incorrectly. If you need to upload a new photo, you can do so at this time. If you have missed one of the 26 boxes, you will see a red box around the box that's missing information. You can then update that box and then proceed to click Save and Close. Note that you won't see all of the 26 columns displayed like the previous eForms website, and this is normal. You will only see the status, title, first name, last name, state, city, street, date of birth, sex, and race columns. If you want to see more columns, you can click the View drop-down and click the extra columns that you want to view. If you have missed a box, you will see a red triangle under the status column. If all of the boxes were completed, the status column will be blank. You can then click Next to proceed. Screen 5, Clio page. On the Clio page, you will enter in your Clio information. The agency or department name is the Clio's agency name or department, for example, Cooper County Sheriff's Office. The name of the agency official will be the Clio's name. 
the title of agency official is the Clio's title. In our example, this will be Sheriff. We will lastly fill in the mailing address of the Clio. You will need to write in the mailing address of your Clio and the zip code. When you enter in the zip code of your Clio, the state, city, and county field should populate based on the entered zip code. You may need to select the city if the zip code is associated with multiple cities. You don't need to enter in the plus four for the zip code. That isn't required, but can be added. Once this is completed, we can click Next. Screen 6, Line Item Page for an SBR. The Line Item Page is where we will add the firearm that you're going to make. In this example, that's an SBR. You will start by clicking the Add Firearm button located above the table and to the left. This will load a new window where the information from the firearm will be added to the eForm1 application. We'll start by typing in the manufacturer. In our example, we will be using Palmetto State, but you will use the information that's engraved on the firearm. The dropdown will start to load while you're typing, and you may need to wait a few seconds to load the manufacturer options if the site is running slow. You will select the manufacturer from the dropdown, and then click Verify Manufacturer to verify the manufacturer. After your manufacturer has been validated successfully, you can click OK in the new window to proceed. We will then select the manufacturer country and click Next. The second screen will load the firearm details. Unless you're making an 80% lower, then you will use the information that's currently engraved on the firearm itself. We will click the Product Type dropdown and select Short Barreled Rifle. You can also select other types of firearms that you're going to make from the dropdown that isn't a short barreled rifle. Once the short barreled rifle dropdown is selected, this will then load the available models based on manufacturer that you selected on the previous screen. You will select the model that's engraved on your firearm. If you select a generic model, for example AR-15, and the engraved model on your firearm is actually different, then your application will be denied. In our example, we will select Freedom 15 because that is the model engraved on our example firearm. Then, we'll be able to select the caliber and unit of measure from the dropdowns. If your firearm is engraved Multical, then you will need to select a caliber that you intend to make from the dropdown. If your caliber isn't in the dropdown, then you can select My Item Description is not in the list, Create New Item. But note, when this box is selected, your application will go into the Pending Research phase and will need to be manually reviewed by the ATF, which can extend the timeline for your application. The length of barrel will be the length of the barrel of the SBR that you want to make in inches, not the current barrel length. The overall length will be the estimated overall length of the firearm that you're making in inches. This is measured with the stock fully extended and any removable muzzle devices removed. For the length of barrel box and the overall length box, you won't need to write in the word inches or the symbol for inches, just the numerical value of the measurement will be sufficient. You will then lastly write in the serial number from the engraving on your firearm. The description box can be left blank. If you want to add description details, you can. You will need to state why you intend to make a firearm. The most common examples are investment and all other lawful purposes, or all lawful purposes. Other reasons may be valid, but those two are the most common. Then you will click Next. On the third screen, the ATF wants you to upload a close-up photo of any stamping or engraving currently on the serialized firearm to make sure your entered information matches your application. To do so, you can click the Browse button to navigate to the photo of your engraving. Add a description, for example, Lower Receiver Engraving, and click Add Document. Once the photo has been added to the table, you can look to the right side and under the blue box labeled Step 3. Below this, you will see the line item summary. This is a great way to review that everything you entered on the previous pages are correct. Please take a minute to verify that your information is correct. If it isn't correct, you can select Back and make the necessary changes. If your entered information is correct, you will then click Finish. You will then see the added firearm as a line item in the middle table. If you notice a mistake with the information of your firearm, you can select the paper and pencil icon located to the right of the serial number under the Actions column to make any changes. If you have missed the box, you will see a red triangle under the Status column. If all of the boxes were completed, the Status column will be blank. After you have reviewed the information from your firearm and confirmed that it's correct, you can select Next. Screen 7, Electronic Documents page. 
The Electronic Documents page is where you can upload additional documents that are relevant to your application. This is most commonly used for corporations, trusts, and other legal entities. As an individual applicant, you aren't required to upload any trust documents. You will still need to upload any state or local permits if applicable. We can click Next. Screen 8. Verify. The Verify page is where you can verify that the information entered in is correct. You will have to review your entered in information and certify that the information is correct before you can proceed to the next page. If you need to make any changes, you can go back to the appropriate section and make the changes. Screen 9. Certify page. The Certify page is where you will need to certify, pay for your application, and sign and submit for your application. If you didn't select the My Item description is not in the list, Create New Item on the Line Item page, or have any page errors, then you should see a green check mark stating that the application has been validated successfully. If you did select the My Item description is not in the list, Create New Item on the Line Item page, then you should see a yellow triangle stating that the model or manufacturer that you have indicated is either unknown or is not listed in the ATF reference tables. ATF will have to validate the information that you provided prior to rendering a decision on your application. This may extend the average processing time for this application. Both will allow you to proceed if you don't have any application errors. If you have any application errors, you will also be told this here with a red triangle or X and links to the pages that need to be fixed. If you have no errors, you can select the radio button under Certify. To certify that, under penalties imposed by 18 U.S.C. 924 and 26 U.S.C. 5861, I certify that, upon submission of this form to ATF, a completed copy of this form will be directed to the CLIO shown in Item 10, that the statements, as applicable, contained in this certification, and any attached documents in support thereof, are true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. Next, you will need to click the Pay button. This will open up a window confirming that you want to continue to pay. To do so, click Continue to open up the Pay.gov pop-up that you will use to pay for the $200 tax stamp. If you have a pop-up blocker enabled, you may need to disable that in order to view the payment window. You will need to follow the steps in the Pay.gov pop-up that are self-explanatory. Once your payment has been submitted, you will see a window indicating that your payment has been successfully submitted and that you can now close the payment window. This will then allow you to click the Sign and Submit button. Next, you can then click the I'm not a robot button to complete the CAPTCHA. After you have selected the photos and verified that you aren't a robot, this will then allow you to click the Sign and Submit button. You will lastly need to confirm your submission by typing in your ATF eForms account PIN. After you click Submit, you may see the spinning icon at this time while your application is being submitted, and this is normal. Mailing Instructions We will now discuss the ATF eForm 1 mailing checklist. After submitting your application to the ATF, the ATF will email your cover sheet and your ATF Form 1. If your application had a yellow triangle on the Certify page, then your application will start in the Pending Research status. This means that your ATF Form 1 that was emailed to you will be watermarked draft and the cover sheet won't have a valid control number or serial number. In this case, you will need to wait for the ATF to review your application. Once your application is reviewed, the ATF will change your application from pending research to submitted. At this time, you will receive another email from the ATF with your ATF Form 1 watermarked submitted and a valid cover sheet. This will be the time that you will be able to mail your cover sheet, fingerprint cards to the ATF, and mail your CLIO paperwork to your CLIO. This can take the ATF up to 150 days to change your application from pending research to submitted. If your application had a green check mark on the Certify page, then your application will start in the submitted status. Your cover sheet will have a valid control number and serial number. The below items will be sent to the ATF after you have received a valid cover sheet from the ATF. The valid cover sheet. Two fingerprint cards for yourself as an individual applicant. 
you should mail your cover sheet and fingerprint cards to the ATF with a shipping method that offers a tracking number to ensure that your package was delivered. You will only have 10 business days to have your fingerprint cards and cover sheet to be delivered to the ATF. Your application may be denied if the ATF doesn't receive your cover sheet and fingerprint cards within the 10 business days. If you have uploaded your .eft file during your application, you won't need to send the cover sheet to the ATF. The below items will be sent to the Clio that you named within the application. The Clio copy of your ATF eForm 1 that was emailed to you. The Clio copy doesn't require a passport photo. You won't need to send any FD-258 fingerprint cards to your Clio. You don't need to ship the Clio copy of the ATF eForm 1 with tracking. After your cover sheet and fingerprint cards are received by the ATF, your application is considered to be submitted. If you have uploaded your .eft file and submitted your application, it is considered to be submitted. Once approved, the ATF will email your approved tax stamp to the email address from your ATF eForm account. The ATF won't send you a physical tax stamp. If you want a physically printed tax stamp, you can view our ATF eForm 1 tax stamp printing service in the video description below. This completes the ATF eForm 1 Individual Applicant ATF eForm 1 Video Walkthrough Guide. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions, you can email us your question using the link in the video description, reach out to us on Reddit using our account u slash National Gun Trusts, or by simply leaving a comment below.